Hello everyone, this is Levi Sheridan. Today I'm making a video about a sumo robot I built for a Mechatronics course in school. This course was competition-based in which each team had to design and manufacture a sumo robot that would autonomously compete in a 3x3 foot arena. The objective of each robot was to push its opponent out of the arena while avoid being pushed out itself. My team took the approach of trying to maximize our forward pushing force by optimizing the grip and traction of the wheels. We also wanted to come up with as simple of a design as possible for the chassis, reducing as many parts and eliminating anything that was unnecessary. This is the design that we came up with. It is a bi-wheeled wedge-shaped sumo robot. The robot consists of two driven wheels that were custom made out of silicone. I made a video about these previously and I'll link that on the page somewhere. Uh, and a thin metal wedge that would get underneath the opponent robot in order to push it out of the arena. Our robot uses seven total sensors in order to compete autonomously, three of them for the opponent detection being in the front tier. One of them is a LiDAR type sensor, time of flight sensor that has a very narrow field of view to detect the robot in front of us. And then two peripheral uh, ultrasonic distance sensors to detect if the robot is to either side of the robot. On the bottom, we have four line detection IR sensors that were used to detect the edge of the arena. The arena was made up of a three by three foot neoprene mat that was black and the edges of it were defined by white tape. We were able to use these IR sensors to detect that tape and to avoid running off the edge of the arena. I will remove these three screws in the front uh, in order to open the chassis and I'll be able to talk a little bit more about the electronics inside as well as some more of the design. If I hinge the lid here, uh, where the uh, opponent detection sensors are mounted, you can see the inside of the robot. As mentioned, we wanted to come up with a super simple and robust design, uh, and I think we did a great job of doing that and only having really three main parts that consist the structure of the chassis. One being the main monocoque structure that houses the wheel wells, as well as all of the mounting points for the electronics and battery that I'll talk about later and then the, the hinge lid that consists of the sensor mounts and the cover for the rest of the robot. Finally, we have the wedge clamp that clamps on this thin 164 inch steel sheet uh, onto the chassis. Uh, and uh, now I can talk a little bit about the electronics on the inside. So the whole thing is controlled by an AT Mega chip uh, and then that is mounted onto a perma proto board that I hand soldered. This board has all the connections uh, for the different sensors as well as a potentiometer to adjust the sensitivity of the edge detection sensors. We also have a drop a five volt uh, step down regulator in order to power the motor controller uh, that's mounted between the wheel wells uh, that powers both of the motors. We also have little cradles for the motors uh, that help support them and reduce some of the stress on the rest of the structure. We then have these little uh, shelves here that support the battery directly above the wheel wells, which is incredibly important for increasing traction. We get traction through our friction coefficient and through our normal weight, and by placing this uh, significant weight that is the battery above the wheel wells, we're going to increase our traction grip, which will give us that really strong pushing force. We then also have a kill switch that directly interrupts the power going from the battery into the board, uh, so that if there's ever a situation, we can easily shut off the entire robot. Um, as mentioned, we wanted the structure to be really simple, and I think we did a great job in doing that by really only having this one main monocoque structure with the lid that encapsulates everything, uh, also giving the lid the double function of not only covering everything, but also mounting the sensors allowed it to be incredibly light. Um, as mentioned, I made and designed these uh, custom silicone wheels, and I will put that video somewhere on the screen uh, again. Uh, and those worked really well. I'll talk a little bit about some of the other prototyping I did to arrive at this. Uh, so when we started off with the wheels, we didn't know how much they would compress under the weight of the robot. Uh, so in order to determine exactly how high we should design the clearance to be, uh, I made this test structure here that had slots uh, for the motors to slide up and down, meaning we could adjust the precise height of the wheels. And this worked quite well in determining the final height at which the wheels should be mounted. Uh, we have just enough ground clearance uh, that under the compression of the robot, uh, the robot rides at an appropriate height and that worked really well in terms of prototyping for that. Uh, for the sensors, I started off with this 
a pretty simple mount uh, where the time of flight would go in the center and then we have the ultrasonics on the outside. And once this uh, worked well and all of the screw holes were at the correct dimensions and everything fit properly, I moved on to printing only half of the, the lid because it takes a long time and a lot of plastic to print this whole uh, lid. I only wanted to see if one of the ultrasonic distance sensors would fit and the time of flight sensor would fit uh, with this new modified uh, design here uh, and that worked well so I was able to move on to the final lid design. Uh, after designing that I had also incorporated these weight reduction uh, sections here where the thickness of the lid is actually reduced in order to reduce some of the weight of the entire robot because in some of our earlier prototyping we were actually over the five pounds and we really had to fine tune it. Um, we were actually able to get the robot to be just under five pounds being 4.99 pounds which was quite impressive. In regards to the rest of the wheel well and the other sensing uh, sensor mounts, uh, I went through a couple other iterative prototypes, uh, this being the first in which I just wanted to see that the motor mounted effectively, that I could print these shelves in one piece without really needing supports and that worked really well. Here you can see I fixed the height so there's no longer the slots for the motor. Uh, this was the first prototype of the wheel well and again I did this because I didn't want to have to print this entire chassis in order to just test this one part. Uh, by printing this, I saved a lot of time and material in order to determine whether or not everything was the correct dimension, everything fit well. After that, I wanted to test a little bit further, uh, so I incorporated one of the sensor mounts here for the line detection sensors uh, that would be mounted between this wall. I also had designed in this cable management channel here, but I ended up not liking it, so I removed it. Uh, and then I also incorporated some of the mounts for uh, the motor controller there in the bottom, as well as the perma proto board on top. Uh, once this was done, I was pretty much uh, arrived at the, the final design, which is what you see here. The robot worked quite well. I will try to put a video of it competing up on the screen, uh, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. We really did a great job of maximizing, optimizing for that pushing force that we wanted. The final design was quite simple, really only being made up of these three uh, structural parts minus the wheels and all of the electronics worked really well. We had originally prototyped uh, all of the electronics on a breadboard, but we wanted to put it on this Perma Proto board to make it really robust and look really great. All of the cables work really well, all of the connectors work really well, and I'm very happy with how it turned out. Uh, so that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed, possibly learned something new, and I hope you have a great day.